Welcome to Lone Crow Adventures, the channel where we talk about all things camping, hiking, and backpacking. If it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. We have a ton of great content that I know you'll enjoy. We're filming on location at Voyageurs National Park. All right, we have the camp set up. So when you first pull in, there is a dock and we just have the canoe set up right next to the sign there. And there is a little trail that leads up to the campsite. There's actually a few little trails on this island, so we're gonna do some exploration later on. All right. Sarah's doing some relaxing. I'm putting on the radius. <laughs> She's got the radius. Yeah, we brought a radius thermocell with us. So we've got the million dollar view here. Million dollar view. That is Rainy Lake. And you can see there's a couple little islands out there. We kind of have a little alcove that's been kind of cut out for us. And we're on our island. We are the only people on this island. We have a nice fire pit and a nice bench, a couple of picnic tables. So that's great. And like I said, there's four tent pads. We've chosen to use this one. It could accommodate a very large tent though. Ours is just a little two person backpacking tent, but this tent pad is easily i would say 12 by 12 so you could put a nice big family dome tent on there if you wanted to these are the bear boxes that you can see uh, there's actually four bear boxes which is nice because i'm not so much worried about the bears as i'm about those darn red squirrels they'll just chew up your stuff but we'll show you it's kind of a disorganized mess but it fits a lot of stuff in there we have all of our extra gear. Because we have a small tent, so it's nice to have everything else. Now, we were able to fit a 48 quart cooler in here, so we do have a few cold beers, and I've got some strawberries on the scene too for later on, so that's nice. Over here, on top of this bear box, this is where we have our water filter set up. So that we can make sure that we always have some fresh water. I'll have to show you guys the bathroom too. That's really, that's really something else. I've used a lot of pit toilets, but man, this thing's a little different. So here we have the restroom. And here we're coming around the corner. There's the throne. All right, so we've got some wipe some toilet paper and some sanitizer there but if you're looking for an open air experience come on down to voyageurs national park good morning everybody we've woken up after our first night and we're getting ready to make some breakfast so what's on the menu today we have a mountain house biscuits and gravy this will be the first time I'm trying the biscuits and gravy, so I'll let you know what it tastes like. Some squirrels this morning. I'm really glad that we put all our gear away last night because those red squirrels that are up here in the north, they can be really destructive. Alright, so we'll put that on there to boil. About three years ago, I was camping in northern Ontario at Caliper Lake and I had a pack and I left it on the shore hanging in a tree while I went out and paddled for the day and when I came back the the package has been completely decimated and I didn't know what had gotten into it I thought my gosh you know what has destroyed it it was just pieces of it everywhere so I fastened it up the best that I could and I went and I took a little nap in my hammock and then I woke up and here this little red squirrel was getting at my life vest and he was tearing it apart and going crazy. So I, 
I'm glad we have bear boxes on this site because I don't really think we're going to see any bears, but at least I can put some extra stuff in there and I don't have to worry about those darn red squirrels because they're really destructive. They like gear almost as much as I do. Getting ready to dive into some biscuits and gravy. It looks kind of gross. Let's give it a stir. It's a strong smell of stuff. It looks disturbing. It's like mush. mush in a Let's bag. see. Oh, that's what it looks like there. Just kind of a pile of goo. Careful, nothing burns you like biscuits and gravy. It turns into a chunk. It's lava. Well, you know what? It does taste like biscuits and gravy. It's not overly too much sausage either. No, they're little. It's kind of gummy and gross, though. I mean, it'll be filling. It kind of reminds me of, like, a bad version of the, the turkey the stuffing. Mm. It has the same kind of bread texture, but it's not quite as good. So I don't see. think it's, it's edible, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's tasty. 310 calories. So that's 620 calories in a single bag here. So. Gosh. I don't think you want to eat it. It's like a fat attack. That's one thing about these mountain house meals. If you're on a diet, just check the diet at the door when you leave the house because they're they're designed to be high calorie because they're supposed to sustain you while you're on the trail so this is not uh, an option if you're trying to lose weight that's for sure we're out for a little bit of exploration well, we have a trail right next to our campsite and a very noisy boat right off to the right hand side okay it's a looks like a houseboat out there we're just checking out our island to see what kind of things are living on it and what kind of scenery we can see. We have to proceed very slowly towards the end of the dock and I will show you the largest spider I have ever seen in my entire life. I have no idea what kind of spider he is. Did you see him? He just jetted down. <gasps> there he is. Do you see him? He is humongous. He is huge. I don't know if you can really get an appreciation of how big this spider actually is. We could spot him at the end of the dock. He is just a monster. My gosh. I have no idea what kind of spider this is either, but he's definitely the terrifying variety. Time for lunch. What's for lunch, you say? Alpine Air Forever Young Mac and Cheese. I've never tried an Alpine Air product. Usually I'm a mountain house girl, but these were on sale. It looks pretty delightful. We've got some it looks like some little spiral pasta with some peas and corn and carrots. A little bit of nutrition. Some cheese sauce. It'll probably be pretty good. Probably about six months ago, we were at Bass Pro. And they had a bunch of different MRE type of uh, meals. These dehydrated meals in a bag. And... We were browsing through them and kind of talking amongst the two of us about what we wanted to have. And no offense to any of the male viewers. Please don't take any offense to this. But there's just something about two women alone in an outdoor store that just draws a lot of male attention. And they always feel like they need to offer us all this worldly advice. So this older man, you know, he's probably in his... I'd say about mid 60s or so comes up and sees that we're looking at these meals and and he says to us 
You gotta be pretty desperate to eat that stuff. Trust me, I'm an old mountaineer. And I kind of thought to myself, well, first of all, mind your own business, pal, is what I thought. But I also thought, only the person that would say that would be someone who's never actually eaten these because the majority of these rehydrated meals are actually delicious. So, I mean, we go on camping trips where this is, you know, the main, the main course on the menu for most of the meals. So I just kind of was offended by that. I mean, I guess it's not everybody's favorite thing. There are certain things that rehydrate better than others. For instance, I don't really like any of the, the breakfast skillet type things. I find that eggs will rehydrate strangely and I'm not a big fan of the dishes that have rice in them, but they're certainly edible. And I wouldn't think that I have to be in some perpetual starvation situation to be desperate enough to eat them. So I think it's just an important lesson in, you know, just mind your business. If you see people doing things, just leave them alone, you know, unless they ask you for your opinion, don't just offer it, you know. That's the take home message from this segment. Thank you. What is that? That's just, I've stirred it earlier. Oh. It's nothing <laughs> offensive. <laughs> Just a little G sauce. Like, what is that? Is that biscuits and gravy? Oh, gross. All right. So it looks like all the veggies have floated to the oh, top. Yeah. Give this a stir. Looks pretty good. Hmm. Smells good. Let's show the viewers. This is what it looks like once it's, once it's cooked up. Mac and cheese with some veggies. That's not too bad. What's the verdict? It's hotter than sin. It's pretty good. Now the veggies are still a little crunchy. They oh, didn't... Like it's aesthetically a lot more pleasing than biscuits and gravy. Oh, yeah. It definitely looks more appetizing. Yeah. The noodles are good. Cheese sauce is delightful. Yeah, I think it's really good. So we're going to eat lunch and go on a little exploration journey after a while. Maybe grab some more firewood and stuff and just get settled in for the night. That's the plan. This is the saw that I like to use for processing wood and it's called Bob Destrude's Buck Saw. This thing is amazing. It folds in on itself so it's fully compact. I really like it. And it can saw, like you can see, it's got a, a fair amount of space here. It can saw through a lot of stuff and it does so very quickly. I'll show you here. There we go, no problems. This thing has gotten me out of a lot of sticky situations. I even used this one time when I was down in Georgia and there was a tree that had fallen over the side of the road and was backing up traffic. I used this with a couple other guys that had some other tools and we got that tree out of the middle of the road. So if you're looking for a great buck saw to take on your next adventure, consider Bob Destrude's buck saw. It is phenomenal. There we go. There's a ton of coals down there, and I don't know why we've had such a difficult time maintaining fires on this trip. It's the rainy season, and a lot of the wood in the forest is very, very saturated. What is not saturated is either fresh cut and full of sap, or it's rotten to the point where it's full of moisture and it just isn't burning well. I've tried hardwood, I've tried softwood, I've tried a combination of the two. Uh, we started with a wood chip base and that, that went really well. And it just seems like we have to keep feeding these, these smaller twigs and stuff into the fire to keep any amount of flames going. Meanwhile, there's a huge coal base on the bottom of the fire. So 
sometimes when you go camping, you just kind of luck out and you just have a, a struggle the whole time. And, and this trip is one of those times where it's just been a struggle. It's going a lot better tonight than it was last night, but I'm really hoping it's not gonna rain because if we get any rain, then this, this fire's history, it's toast. So we're here on our last night enjoying a campfire. What are some of the things that you think that went really well on this trip? Not the fire. No. Can we start with things that didn't go well? Things that didn't go well? Yeah. The fire. The fire, yeah. The fire has been our biggest, our biggest struggle. Um, in a few minutes I might say the weather. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I think the canoe trip here went well. We didn't end up wet. Yes. And we found it. We didn't get lost. Yep. I think the site was really nice. The bugs haven't really been as bad as they could have been. Yeah, definitely. Oh, another thing that didn't go well is that bathroom. I'm not sure how I feel about that at all. <laughs> that thing, that open air when experience. When a screen consists of like one side of a fence, you know, and there's a squirrel that lives down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bathroom's the open air experience, that's for sure. And, and it attracts a lot of flies. So when you're trying to do your business, I mean, you, you need to be in and out pretty quick, or otherwise you're you're kind of fanning the air and trying to get the flies away from you, and they're trying to bite you. And there's a biting variety too; they're not very nice. But I think the site itself is really nice. It's a very beautiful, picturesque place. There's a few neighbors. We have uh, another little island right across the way, and there's a houseboat there, and they've had some kayaks, and they've been kind of zipping around in the waterways. There's been quite a few people fishing and stuff, so there's been some good people watching to do. But they've been at a distance, so they haven't really bothered us. We haven't had any wildlife, so that's good, you know. Yep. Yep, now, up until this point, the weather's been good. They're calling for rain in the next few minutes, so we might get a little bit of rain. But I think, all in all... I had hoped for a swim, but I'm too concerned about the state of the water to swim. Yeah, there's kind of some algae floating around in it, and... There's an awful lot of, like, underwater growth, things that, you know, I don't know. It doesn't look really clear. It looks treacherous. There's slippery rocks waiting to do you in. And after that spider on the dock, I was kind of good on that. That's true. So, yeah, we're kind of on, like, day three of stink. Yeah, I mean, a shower would have been good. Yeah, I don't see a shower in our future. We'll probably shower when we get home, which will be... Probably. Two days <laughs> Probably. <from now. laughs> probably shower. <sighs> but I think, uh, I think all in all, I think the trip's actually gone really well. I've had a really good time. and There was part of me that thought there would be some epic failure in going six miles in a canoe on a lake that size. So... And it didn't happen, so that's excellent. Well, I guess until tomorrow we'll see, but... <laughs> It'll be a long journey back. Definitely the boat traffic is another thing, too, where motorboats just don't have respect for the small watercraft. And, you know, and, and that could be largely, maybe they just don't understand the impact that their wake is causing. But it was really bad yesterday at several different points with the, with the boat traffic. Yeah, I think I felt just kind of crazy after a while, and it just became amusing every time somebody drove by. <laughs> you know, it's like a roller coaster ride. Now, would you would you choose to return here? Um, I would. I might choose to do some things differently. The canoe was a lot bigger, and we had a lot more space. And I think um, potentially, remember when we questioned whether or not to bring that shower head? Yep. Yep. I think that would have solved a lot of our issues had we brought it because you didn't have to actually get in and deal with that. Yep, that so, would have been a, a good thing. Portable I mean, but shower. it is a little cold with that frost morning last night to be showering. You don't know, have a lot of clothes, so. But uh, I, it's it's beautiful. I mean, I don't know. There's too many places you can be the only people on an island, so. 
I think next time too, knowing the amount of space we have in the canoe, I definitely would bring at least two bundles of firewood. And some hot dogs. And some hot dogs. Yeah, we didn't What's bring hot dogs. We didn't bring hot dogs. We brought the cooler and we we reserved every space in that cooler for boots. <laughs> you know? Well there was a few Gatorades. I mean there's a couple Gatorades, but honestly, since we've been here, this is the third alcoholic drink I've had in forty eight yeah. hours. And that's what, like your fourth beer? Yeah, well, it's cold. It was cold last night. Yeah. And you get to the point where you don't have to go to the bathroom. When the bathroom's across the island in the middle of the night, there's no moon any of these nights we've been here. So, yeah. No. So, I think next time I would pack half the amount of booze <laughs> because I really thought we were going to get here and just party, party on. hard. But it's a know? lot of work to be here. So Yeah, that was a miscalculation. And I should have brought a pack of weenies and thrown them on mm. the fire. That would have been delicious. Yeah. I think if we had, like, we probably could have spared a little room, though, for, like, some kind of shower system and, you know. But but I, I think it had to be earlier in the year. I think it's still too it's cold. It's a little chilly, yeah. And the lake's cold. And honestly, even if we would have just brought the, the shower, the portable shower yeah. head, we wouldn't have had to bring the whole yeah. bathroom structure, just the head, dip it in the water, you know, get yourself all I think showered up. you need probably a hatchet too we struggled yeah. with just a saw but we had so much stuff we didn't know how much room we had so i think you're at a, a disadvantage not owning your own canoe to kind of know what dimensions you're working with but so well it's definitely been a learning experience it was our first attempt at doing a canoe trip that involved a camping aspect with it like an overnight trip we've always just done day trips and we've always been very successful with that so this is really kind of just kind of dip in the toe in to see if we like it. And we dip the toe we, in northern Minnesota? Yeah, we dip pretty, the toe. Pretty serious place. Northern Minnesota. Hey, go big or go home. All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching our journey. Um, we're going to have a little bit more footage to shoot tomorrow on the, the journey back because, you know, we might have a storm whip up, so that could make for a good time. So until then, we're going to sign off for tonight, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. There's a bunny. Whoop. Hello, Mr. Bunny. How are you? Well, if that's the only wildlife we encounter at the toilet, we'll be doing well. That's the well. biggest rabbit I've actually seen ever. Big old He's hair. Right to us. Hmm.